Welcome to the School District of Superior's training for SPEDFORMS IEP software system. SPEDFORMS is easy for special educators to use because it is designed by special educators. You can keep up with SPEDFORMS Wisconsin monthly updates by visiting the news section of the SPEDFORMS website or subscribing to their monthly newsletters. A robust support system has been developed consisting of 17 SPEDFORMS trainers. As indicated in this chart, there is at least one SPEDFORMS trainer at each building, including early childhood. Let's officially start the training by going over some key vocabulary terms. This is a small sampling of key vocabulary, including active. A student who is being assessed for or is receiving special education services has an active record within SPEDFORMS. Inactive. A general education student whose record exists within SPEDFORMS but whose record is inactive. Case manager. The person who controls an active student's record within SPEDFORMS. SPEDFORMS administrator. The person who oversees and manages SPEDFORMS within your district. Read only access. Someone who can view a student record but cannot edit or work on the record. Edit access. Someone who can view and work on the student record. Working copy. The form as it exists on the screen. The copy you work on. Finalized copy, the completed form that is given to parents and is stored in SPEDFORMS history. IEP snapshot, similar to IEP at a glance, it is a shortened version of the IEP. Provider number, a number automatically assigned to all SPEDFORMS users that tracks each user within the system. Although the provider number is not printed on any form, it tracks the total amount of time each person is responsible to provide services to students, alerts users of responsibility to conduct the assessment, tracks the overall progress in completing evaluations, helps administration balance staff caseloads, and can be extremely helpful when scheduling students for services. A link to the complete SPEDFORMS vocabulary document is included at the top of this slide. Pause the recording and review the SPEDFORMS vocabulary document by clicking on the link. SPEDFORMS requires access to the internet and works on Chrome, Firefox, Explorer, Safari, and Microsoft Edge browsers. However, it works best with Chrome. When signing into the new user interface for SPEDFORMS Wisconsin for the first time, you'll need to set up your browser and bookmark the web page. Browser setup turns off printing of the SPEDFORMS website URL on all pages. It also turns off caching, so each time you go to a page, you see the most current information. Bookmarking the page will make logging in quicker because a Google search will typically not take you to our school district's personalized website. To log in, first enter your username, which is the first initial of your first name, followed by your last name. For example, if Alexander Hamilton was entering his username, it would be A. Hamilton. Enter your password. You should have received a personalized password in an email. Please contact your trainer or the special education secretary for assistance if needed. Click the green login button. Pause the recording and complete the steps on this slide.
New users need to complete the educator setup. This is where you customize SPED forms for your individual use. To access the educator setup, select the gear in the navigation menu on the left side of the screen or the person icon in the blue circle on the top right of the screen. Once you open Educator Setup, you'll notice that the red text beneath the menu displays your level of permissions within SPED forms. Most staff will be listed as SPED teacher. Open the profile option to personalize your information. Make sure your email address is correct. If you forget your password, a link to reset it will be sent to this email address. The forgot your password feature will not work if your email address is not entered or is incorrect. Next, enter your school phone number, including extension, and school mailing address. This information will be displayed as your contact information on forms you send to parents and guardians. Your work phone number should be the phone where you get your messages. Your work address should be the address a parent or guardian would use to return a document to you. Make sure your title is correct. All special education teachers should use the universal title of special education teacher. If you typically use a specific disability area as part of your title like SLD teacher, EBD teacher, etc., some parents will react negatively if that disability area is different than their child's disability. For example, a parent might object to an EBD teacher being a member of an evaluation team for their child who has a learning disability or autism. The exception to this are teachers who are very specialized, such as deaf and hard of hearing teachers, speech language pathologists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, or school psychologists. You will also need to change your password. Instructions and requirements for this are included in the next slide. Next, do not change the print font size setting. Increasing or decreasing print size can create problems when printing forms. It particularly is an issue with forms that include tables. Next, select Show Save Warning. There is no auto save as it slows down the program with too much data. Hide provider name should only be used if you do not provide IEP services to students, like an administrator or secretary. This does not apply to most of you going through the training today. The 2020 user interface version has been pre-selected for everyone. Please double check that your version is set for the year 2020. Please ask your building trainer for assistance if this is not the case. The text box next to location and agency should not be completed. This is for providers who have access to SPED forms but are not district employees, such as CESA staff. When finished, remember to save. Pause the recording and complete your profile. Do not nav navigate away from the profile because you will receive instructions and requirements for changing your password in the next section. Now it's time to change your password. Passwords must be at least eight characters long. It cannot contain your username, district ID, school ID, district name, or your first or last names. However, you must use a combination of letters and numbers. It is also recommended that you include a symbol, dollar sign, at sign, percentage, etc., for increased password strength. Pause the recording to change your password and then save your educator profile before you move on to the goals section. Now let's take a look at section two, goals. 
This is where we can write your own goals, store them, and then easily insert them into any IEP you're working on. Open goals now. Now let's add a customized goal bank goal to your goal bank. Start by clicking the blue plus goal button in the upper right corner of the page. Once the goal bank page opens, select a category that's appropriate for your goal. You're also able to include subcategories and objectives. This goal will be for reading fluency. Next, you'll type in your goal in the text box. You'll notice in this example the capital letters CHLD. It's recommended that you use this instead of writing out the word child, student, or a specific name, as SPED forms will detect CHLD and automatically enter the student's first name in the IEP. Complete the goal details, including grade level and short term objectives if needed. When finished, click Save. This goal will now appear at the top of the list for that designated category. In this case, Reading Fluency Goals. Pause the recording to add a personalized goal to your goal bank. Section 3, Team Member List, is our next section to set up. The team member list allows you to enter team members into various forms without having to retype names repeatedly. SPED staff names that would typically be included in IEP paperwork have been uploaded to the global team directory in SPED forms for you to choose from. If you need to add staff contacts to the global directory, please contact your secretary or staff administrator. Open the team members list to get started. General education teachers are not included in the global directory, but you may manually add them to your personalized team member list. There are two ways to add people to your team member list. You can either select the person from the global directory by choosing the person icon or you can manually type the information into the fields. When you save your list, it will be automatically alphabetized for you. Pause the recording to update your personalized team member list before moving on. Similar to the team member list, you can quickly enter test names and descriptions into your IEP forms with the information from Section 4, the Evals and Assessment Tools data bank. Once you open the Evals and Assessment Tools section, you'll find the most universal and frequently used items below in the default Custom Materials, Procedures, and Evaluators list. Above, you can customize your own materials by filling in the text boxes. Pause the recording to review default materials and add any materials to your personal list if it's not included in the default list. Now that you have completed your educator setup, it's important to note several navigation tips. The first tip is regarding which navigation commands or buttons to use. When navigating within the program, it is extremely important to only use the SPEDFORMS navigation buttons. If you use your Chrome browser's navigation buttons or other chosen browser's navigation buttons, you can lose all of your work and be involuntarily logged out. The green Switch Students button eliminates having to navigate through multiple screens to work on the forms of a different student. It's a shortcut that will take you from the page you're working on with one student to that same page, but for a different student. 
This will be especially helpful during progress report time as you will be able to quickly navigate between students to complete their I-6 interim review of IEP goals using the Switch Students button. The second tip is regarding the time spent logged into the program. SpedForms will automatically log a user out after 120 minutes of being in the program. Although a timer will help you keep track of your login time, you can reset the timer by saving a page or navigating to a new screen. The blue icon page title in the menu at the left indicates where you currently are. In, the, in these screenshots, I am in the student list menu. To navigate to other sections within SpedForms, click on the menu symbols at the left of the screen. Until you become familiar with the icons, you'll probably want to see the written page titles. Make the page titles visible by clicking the three horizontal lines at the top left of the page. When you're working on a page in SpedForms, you are granted exclusive rights to that page. Only one person can edit the page at a time, so anyone else who wants to work on that page will need to wait for you to finish. Without fail, trainers and administrators get questions about being able to view a form that has been shared with them but not edit it because another user has exclusive rights. As a courtesy to others, leave the page so that they may access it. You can leave by going to another page or form, returning to the student list, or logging out of SpedForms. The last navigation tip is about the navigation confirmation pop-up window. This pop-up window will occur if you've typed something new in the current page and then navigate to a new page. Choose one of the three options, clicking Cancel navigation or the red X in the upper right hand corner cancels the navigation, closes the pop up window, and you remain on the current page. Clicking save and continue saves the most recent changes and navigates you to a new page. Clicking don't save takes you to the new page but doesn't save the most recent changes you've made on the current page. Always save frequently. Changes don't automatically update. SpedForms wants to make sure that you are supported and provides an extensive educator guide with step-by-step -step instructions on how to use all of the features within the program. From the left menu, the circle with the question mark inside it is the educator guide. It is not recommended to print the educator guide because it is a huge document and it gets updated with new features and instructions. Within the guide, there is a search bar for you to find exactly what you're looking for. Refer to the educator guide before asking your SpedForms building trainer as you will likely find the answer here. Access to the educator guide and detailed video demonstrations can be found embedded throughout SpedForms. Clicking on the post-it note with a question mark in it will take you to that specific section of the educator guide. Updated versions of SpedForms will show a circle with a question mark in it instead of the post-it note. You can also watch YouTube demonstrations by clicking the YouTube icon if available. Time for a break before we move into learning about how to manage your student list, working with forms menus, and writing evaluations and IEPs. Please pause the recording for a five to 10 minute break. When managing your student caseload, the student list is your main landing page. The student list shows students who have case manager rights to 
which are shown within the shaded background, or students shared with you by another case manager, which are shown with a white background. Your student list provides important dates at a glance with an easy to read color coded and symbol supported system. A green check mark indicates the student's information is up to date and in compliance. No further action is needed for the moment. An orange triangle similar to a caution sign means that something is due within 90 days. In the example on the screen, you will see that Daffy Duck's evaluation is due within 90 days as this date is in orange and has the orange triangle. A red hexagon similar to a stop sign means that something is overdue and out of compliance. Looking at Snowman Yeti's information, we can see that their evaluation is out of compliance and requires immediate attention. The gold scales of justice symbol next to Joe Blow's name indicates an educational rights alert and is generally used for students involved in due process hearings or other legal situations. The red and white cross next to Egbert's student's name indicates a health alert. The pink birthday cake next to Daffy's duck name indicates an upcoming birthday. The blue gear to the left of each student's name will bring you to their student setup. The larger blue circle at the top right of the screen will allow you to view your profile or quit SPED forms. Below, the profile symbol is a drop down menu to sort your student list. The default is to sort by student's last name. Students who are already enrolled in the district can be added to your case management list using the Find or Request Student feature. It is found in the left navigation menu as indicated by the symbol of a person with a tag on their shoulder. Find student means that the student has not been assigned to a case manager and you will pick up that student to be on your case management list. Request student is when the student has bed forms in another district, but you need to take over as a case manager. Due to privacy laws, you cannot use bed forms to initiate the request, so you must contact the case manager at the student's previous district. That case manager will then transfer case management access to you through sped form system and can be found in the student list with inactive students visible. Typically, case management is assigned and set up by administration. You will be given time to review your student list and update as needed. Please don't pick up students until you've received complete instructions. When the Find or Request student window opens, enter the first, last, or first and last names of the desired student. Click Next to see a list of all students matching the search criteria. In this example, I searched for student Jack Miller and found that he does not already have a case manager assigned to him. This is indicated in the case manager column where it says, Import Nightly. To assign myself as case manager, I would then select the pickup button in the last column. Following this selection, I will automatically return to the student list where Jack Miller will be shown with a shaded background. If a student already has a case manager assigned to them, you can request to become the new case manager. Select the pickup button that correlates to their name. A pop-up window will appear to indicate the current case manager has been notified of your request. You are now the new case manager. As a reminder, any student on your student list with a shaded background indicates that you are the case manager and have case management rights. Pause the recording and go through the steps of picking up students who you need to be the case manager for. Only add students if you are the case manager. You will learn how to share files with other staff like related service providers in the next section.
case managers and administrators can also grant access to student files without changing case managers. IEP teams with related service providers like speech, occupational, and physical therapies that need access or edit IEP forms are one example of this. In order to share files, first, click on the name of the student from the student list. When the form menu opens, select Sharing or Transfer from the left navigation menu. When the sharing window opens, click on the Select Staff Category or Location drop-down menu. To choose how you will search for the staff member you'll share files with. You can choose to view all staff or select a category to narrow your search. When the list of users opens, select the person or persons you want to give access to by selecting the Share button next to their name. It is extremely important to note that when a user is first given access to a student record through sharing, they automatically have read-only access. As the case manager, you have one extra step to take so that staff members can edit student files. To give the staff access, make sure that you check the Edit checkbox next to their name after you share the file with them. School psychologists and related service providers can't access or edit a student's documents if the case manager has not given them access to the student and the ability to edit. Pause the recording and share student files from your case management list with the necessary IEP team members. One last feature when it comes to managing students is that case managers can transfer a student to a new case manager. Ensure that you have finalized all IEP and evaluation forms before you transfer the student to a new case manager. We will go over how to finalize forms in a later section. Transferring a student to a new case manager uses the same beginning steps as sharing files. First, you will select the student's name from your student list, then navigate to the Sharing or Transfer option in the left navigation menu. Once on the Sharing page, you will see a white text box toward the bottom of the blue box that says, Send this student to a new case manager. Select this option, and when the transfer window opens, enter the new case manager's first or last name to a search. Similar to the search function when sharing files, all users with the name you entered will appear on the screen. This includes both within our district and in other SPED forms districts in Wisconsin and Minnesota. The top table shows local educators, which are people in our district or CESA 12. The bottom table shows remote educators, which are people outside of our district. You will choose a person from the local educators table the majority of the time. An important detail to be aware of is that you have the option of selecting the reset sharing box when transferring a student to a new case manager. If you check or select the reset sharing option, it will not only remove the student from your list, but it will reset the sharing for the student completely, removing all access to that student to anybody who has currently. Be careful about checking that box. Pause the recording and make any necessary case management transfers before moving on. Time for a break before we move into Time for a break before we move into learning about how to manage your student list, working with forms menus and writing evaluations and IEPs. Please pause the recording for a 5 to 10 minute break. So far, we've gone over setting up your educator profile, program navigation, resources like the educator guide, and managing your student list, 
So let's dive into managing and working with the IEP and evaluation forms. To access the student's forms, click on the student's name from your student list. When the forms menu opens, you'll see that forms are organized within categories including referral and initial evaluation, reevaluation, IEP and related forms, notice forms for determining placement, miscellaneous, other forms and logs, shared files, and form letters. The file folder symbol to the left of the category indicates that there are multiple forms located within this group. Click on the category folder to view the included forms. Click on the referral and initial evaluation category. After the category folder opens, you'll be able to see a list of available forms. To start working in a form, click on the form's name. To access the Spanish version, click on the symbol of a blue circle with the letters S and P inside. Once you are done with that form, click the navigation button named Forms to return to the Forms menu. Next, we will review the reevaluation folder. The image on the left shows a summary of the forms included in the reevaluation folder. Click on the RE5 reevaluation notice and consent regarding need to conduct additional assessments form. As mentioned earlier, SpedForms has an extensive data bank of commonly used educational tests that can be inserted into your forms. While in the RE5, select the Edit Materials and Procedures button to open the pop up window. You will select either Select from My Custom Materials and Procedures button or the Add New Blank button. Clicking on Select from My Custom Materials and Procedures allows you to access templates saved in your personal materials bank, whereas clicking on Add New Blank allows you to manually enter the information. Take a moment to select a template for the student's RE5, Notice and Consent to Test. Now that the assessment name and description have been added, a staff member must be designated as the assessment provider from the drop-down menu. It's important to have accurate evaluation forms completed in a timely manner because information like the test names and assigned provider are used by SpedForms to ensure compliance with timelines and procedures. Educator assessments and assessment tracking will be reviewed later on. If you need to add more assessments, select Save, and then either click the Select from My Custom Materials and Procedures or the Add New Blank button. If you are done, select Save and Close. Return to the Forms menu by clicking the Navigation button named Forms at the top of your screen. When completing an, an initial or reevaluation, the evaluation report, what we typically call the ER1, contains the majority of the information presented at an eligibility meeting. Let's review some key features found in SpedForms. From the reevaluation forms menu, click on ER1 evalu evaluation report form. Initially, select an evaluation template to load all necessary sections of the evaluation report and then select the appropriate form template for your student. For this example, click on Specific Learning Disability, SLD, Reevaluation to access the various sections of the evaluation report. You must select the type of evaluation being completed on the cover page before you can finish and finalize the evaluation report. Navigate to the cover page, which is the first section in the table. Choose between initial evaluation or re-evaluation. Save the form, then select the ER menu button to the right to navigate back to the ER menu to complete the other sections. 
Using the Materials and Procedures database is a great tool to make report writing quicker. This example shows the pre-academic or academic skills section of the evaluation report. Click the SPED test button to access the test templates. A pop-up window with a list of test categories will appear. Select Achievement for today's training. After clicking on the Achievement category, a window with a variety of tests will appear. Choose the desired test and click Insert. The test description and a template will be inserted where your cursor is placed. Pause the recording and take some time to explore the various SPEDFORMS folders, including the other sections of the ER. The next category of student forms is the IEP and Related Forms section. Click on the Individualized Education Program folder now. The IEP sections are organized as recommended by the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Click on section 1-4.1.1, Information about the student present levels, to record information about the student's present levels of performance in the areas of academic achievement and functional performance. Click the downward arrow next to the instructions to expand detailed instructions from the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. When finished with this section, select the orange navigation button labeled Next Page to go to the next section of the I-4, which includes special education factors and parent concerns. At the top of most form pages are a series of buttons with various commands to use within that form. First up is the spell check command, which will spell check the text box in which your cursor is located. The next button will allow you to insert a page break. This is especially useful to prevent a table or chart from being split between two pages when printed. The next button allows you to save the current page. Selecting the center button will bring you to the forms menu. The next button, labeled students, will bring you to the student list. To the right is the print preview command. Lastly, the button with the symbol of a printer is for printing the current form. As a reminder, do not change the font or the font size from what is preset in SPEDFORMS, as it will cause formatting problems when printing. You can change font style like bold, italics, underline, etc. Also, do not change the font color, as this is a legal document and should remain in black ink. When working in a word processing text box, you can enlarge the box by selecting the double diagonal lines and dragging the box downward. When printed, text boxes automatically expand so that everything you've entered prints in its entirety. There are some places where you must select information to include in your documentation from a drop-down menu. Two such examples are educational environments and disability categories. Form completion instructions are sometimes shown in black, green, or red typeface. These are instructions to the person completing the form that exist only on the working or screen version of the form. This text is not required to be on the form given to parents. The colorized text won't appear once the form is finalized and printed. This makes the final printed version much shorter in length. Some forms display text in blue typeface. These typically trigger a pop-up window containing additional information. For example, clicking Parent or Guardian triggers a message regarding who has parental rights to sign consents for special education. Finalizing is the second step in the process of saving your documents. It's like taking a picture of the form and storing it in an electronic filing cabinet. 
After finalization, changes made on the working or screen copy of the form do not alter the finalized copy stored in history. A form with the same date cannot be refinalized unless the prior copy is deleted from history by an administrator. Some forms allow you to finalize a proposal or draft. SPEDFORMS recommends that you utilize this option for notice forms, consent forms, and the IEP. For example, once you've received parental consent or approval, then go back and finalize the forms by choosing Final. Saving a proposal or draft copy documents that the district made an offer within the specified time limits and should a due process dispute arise, may document a district's good faith effort to provide an appropriate program of services to the child. Always save before finalizing. If you finalize without saving, any changes you made to the document will not appear in the finalized document. Pause the recording to spend some time exploring the IEP and related forms section. Now that you've had some time to look at and work with the IEP forms, hopefully you've discovered how easy and intuitive they are. Even so, there are times when the IEP must be amended, but this is relatively simple. From the IEP forms menu, check the box next to Amended. This is directly under the student's name as shown in the top image. Navigate to the I3 team meeting cover page and add the amendment date and any other necessary information before saving. For example, you may need to change the frequency of services from one time a week to two times a week. So you will go to section B of the program summary to change the service frequency and then save. The next step is to return to the IEP menu and click the orange validate button. As long as all the information is correct and you don't think there are any errors, select finalize and the amended copy will be added to the student's history. It's recommended that you make a note in the comment text box within the finalize window to note this copy is an amendment and the date it was created. This will make it easier to find when searching through the student's history. The next SPED forms folder for review is called Other Forms and Logs. There are a variety of useful forms within this folder including the communication log in the IEP snapshot. The IEP snapshot is an abbreviated document that provides a quick reference to a student's finalized IEP. It includes information about disability-related needs, the measurable annual goals, supplementary aids and services, frequency, time, location of special education and related services, supports for personnel, and if a behavior intervention plan is in place. IEP snapshots are a short and simple way to provide information about a student's needs, services, and accommodations or modifications to staff members. Now, click on the communication log form to learn more about this paperless record keeping tool. When you open the communication log for a student, you will see the option to run a search with a customized date range. Any log contacts in that date range will show up in a list that can be printed or saved to a PDF. To create a new entry into the communication log, click the New Entry button under Search. The communication log entry form will open to complete all fields. It is useful to have a new parent communication log entry open when you contact the student's family because it will automatically record the date and time for you. However, these can be adjusted if you are documenting at a later time. A student's history is where finalized IEP documents are stored. You can also upload and save other important documents in the student's history. Some examples of forms that could be added to history include doctor's reports, due process forms, information from an outside agency, student work samples, or PDFs of IEP documents outside software systems. 
To upload forms to a student's history, first start at the Student's Bed Forms menu. Click History in the left navigation menu. Select the Upload File button to bring up the Upload Files pop-up window. From here, click the Select Files button or drag them to the open space that says Drop Files here. Once you have all the files in this box, click the Upload button. The file will be shaded green when it's done uploading. Click the green Done Uploading button to navigate to the Upload Notes page. Add a detailed description or a note, then save. Today's training will not go into detail about the different reports available in SPED forms. However, one report to highlight is the combined report. It acts as an expanded version of the student list. You can view students that you case manage, who receive services from you, or are shared with you from another case manager. The SPED Forms Vocabulary Index with descriptions of the reports can be found by following the link on this slide. Please explore various reports independently. As mentioned earlier in the training, once a notice and consent for an initial evaluation or re-evaluation has been finalized, the materials and procedures will appear in the system for tracking. To see a list of procedures and due dates that have been assigned to you, click on the Educator Assessments in the left navigation menu from that student's SPED Forms page. When you've finished your procedure, you will complete three steps so the assessment tracking system remains current and your documentation is compliant. From the Educator Assessment menu, Locate the assessment or procedure you finished and select the green Mark Completed button. When the Set Completed Date window opens, enter the date that you completed the assessment. Finally, select the green Mark Completed button to save. To monitor your assigned tasks and due dates for a specific student, use the Assessment Tracker, which is found by going to the Student's Bed Forms menu and opening the Other Forms and Logs folder. Be aware that if users were not chosen prior to finalizing, providers will need to be chosen from the dropdown next to each item. If no users are selected, the assessments will not be tracked. The final topic for today's training is to review common problems for new users and possible answers or solutions. Please pause the video and read through the table of common problems for new users and corresponding solutions or answers. Please reach out to a SPED Forms trainer at your building if you have any questions or need assistance. Thank you.